Psalms, chapter 90. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. Well, I guess we know where this one came from. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Writing from the complete early history of Israel, all through Genesis, all through Exodus, and God has been with them. And dwelling place, God dwelt among them. I think the passage of the Bible says, God dwelling among us. Before the mountains were brought forth. Genesis 1. Or even thou hast formed the earth before Genesis 1. And the world. So the world is different from the earth. The earth is that big ball. The earth is nothing. It's full of resources. That's what the earth has. That man needs. The world is the, the, the buildings, the people. There's a difference between the world and the earth. Even from everlasting to everlasting. Every dispensation, every age and all that. Thou art God. Well, you wouldn't think that. When, when you read the stories as we're going through kings and all that. That... To the people, he's not God. He's everything but. You know, they burned their children to Molech. They uh, worship the we read today the the brazen serpent that Moses made it wasn't to be worshipped. But God is God, no matter who you worship. God is God, no matter if you don't believe in Him. Psalm says, "Hey, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God." Problem, there is a God. Just because you say there isn't a God, who are you? Thou turnest man to destruction. In Genesis 3, God says, listen, you're cursed. You did exactly what I told you not to do. And there were curses placed upon man, upon the serpent, upon the land, upon the woman. And say it's return ye children of men. Man left God and God leaves an open door for man to come back. Even though God knew that Adam failed and disobeyed, he still showed up and said, Adam, where art thou? Jesus said, come on to me. God is not willing that any should perish. The open door is there. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past. Time is no relevance to God. It may be to us, but it ain't to God. God is the patient. God never worries about time. When we think, oh, we got to have that prayer, we got to have that thing now, God's like, no. Just wait it out. How many years did it take for the Lord Jesus Christ to show up? How many years has it been now that the Lord, the Lord is long-suffering with the, with the rapture? It's all in his time. And as they watch in the night, short, a few hours long. There are four watches. You divide four watches among the night and it's three hours apiece. Thou criest, no, excuse me, thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as a sleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up man's life. In the morning flourish. And grows up, and it even is cut down and withered. That's, that's what life is. Life is quick. Compared from when God started the clock with the sun, moon, stars, and signs, and times, and, and uh, seasons, to when he finally cuts time and, and eternity starts, 
What is 70 years or 80? What is it? 6,000 years. What, what, what is 80 years? What is 80 years compared to eternity past, the time that we have now, and eternity future? Not even a speck. There is no time in eternity. You're up in the morning. Here you are. You grow up all day long. And even you're cut down and withered. That's what life is described as. And James backs that up. And but in that time, what does man do? He, he messes his life up. He searches for the wrong things. He gets involved with things he shouldn't. But all things done for Christ will last at the judgment seat of Christ. It's all what you do for Jesus in that very short time. For we are consumed by thine anger. And by thy wrath are we troubled. God was mad with Israel left and right and up and down. He was killing them. He had the whole nation uh, up to a certain age when he go into promised land because of disobedience. Because if ten men came back with a false report, how many of them dropped dead in the wilderness and did not go into the promised land? He was angry with them. He was angry with them when, when, he's, when Moses was up there and Aaron made the calf. They said if God and Moses ever got angry together, that would have been it. Israel would have been gone. Wiped out. Mo Moses always pleaded for the people. You wonder how you know if you got a good pastor? He's pleading for the people. He's praying for the people. And even when 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 God tells him you're not going to get a particular blessing, he still leads the people on. And then when he knows he he's going to die and and pass on, he finds a faithful man to take over. How many preachers would know if they were going to die soon that they would go find somebody faithful for the church or let the church do it after they're dead? How many preachers actually get down on their knees and pray for the congregation? One of the churches that I was in, I, I would, I embarded who sat where and I would actually during the day pray by the seating order. And if I didn't know who was the, their name or, or couldn't remember the name, I said, Lord, you know, you know who was next in that, in that role. A pastor should be able to do that. I mean, he looks at them three times a week and they usually sit in the same spot. Moses prayed for the people. Had Moses not prayed a couple times, God would have wiped them out. You know that? Thou, God, has set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. You can't hide from God your sins. God even heard the murmurings in the tents. God even knew that for one guy a Babylonian garment and a, a, a gold and all that was hidden in the dirt. That was a secret sin. And God knew it was going to happen before he even did it. Aiken. How about that? For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We make God angry more than we do make him please. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil. Oh, and the good. What's the Bible say? It says, for all of sin comes short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. We are selfish human beings. We don't please God all the time. 
We spend our years as a tale that is told. Tale, you know, how much? A teller. The days of our years are three score years and ten. Seventy. I believe you can shorten that. Dishonor your mother and father. The Bible says you shall not live long in the New Testament. That's a law of God. How are you going to change that? Destruct your body with alcohol, with cigarettes, with improper sex. You can shorten your life. Don't look both ways before crossing the road. You can shorten your life. Drugs can shorten your life. Doing stupid things. I don't know what some of these stupid warning labels they have out there, but, you know, I guess if you were to take a hair dryer in the shower with you, it would be a stupid thing. You would shortchange your life real quick. But I'm saying little accidents that can happen around the house can shorten your life. And if by reason of strength, they be four score years, 80, strength, strength from what? Where have we been reading about strength? God giving it. It takes a lot of strength to be 80 years old. Your teeth go away. Your eyes start dimming. You better start reading the Bible before, you, before your eyes go dim. Yet is their strength labor and sorrow. Did you get that? Labor and sorrow. Go back to Genesis chapter 3. You're going to have to do labor. You're going to have to do something. If you don't, you become a vegetable. You become sore. You get bed sores if you don't do nothing. Sorrow. Tears. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. Your soul, go, your soul goes off somewhere when you die. It goes off to the Lord today or it goes off to hell. What do they say? Go take a swan dive into hell. Oh. Your spirit flies to God, saved or lost. That belongs to God, your spirit. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? I wouldn't want to know the power. Can you imagine what God can do. I mean, if he just got seriously angry. Look at Jerusalem. Can you imagine what the picture would have been with Noah and from the time that the Lord shuts that door to the time they take their feet out that ark and on the on the earth. Imagine what all that earth looked like during that time. That was the anger of God. Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. God is a jealous God. He's a consuming fire. He will have the right to throw you into hell and let you stay there for eternity. He is a wrathful God for the, for the born-again Christian. He'll, he'll deny you a crown for all eternity. He'll deny you the right to reign with his son. So teach us to number our days. Ask God how long you're going to live. And get what he wants you to do done. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom to know what God wants us to do. And do holy for him. And no fooling around. No sin. Our hearts. Did you get that? Our hearts. Not our head. 
Not our thinking, not our imagination, but put our heart into it. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. We want God to return. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, and we may rejoice and be glad all our days. It is best to get saved as early as possible. If you get people who are saved and late in life, there's really not much you can do. I mean, not really much you can teach an old, do old dog, Gentile, new tricks. It's hard to get somebody off booze who's been on it for his entire life or smoking cigarettes or never read the Bible his whole life and now you want him to read it. Best is to get saved early in life. I was saved at 18 years old. 18, 19 years old. That was still too late. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us. And the years within we have seen evil. God does great things for us. And some of those things are when we have been afflicted. Listen, when he, when he, had, when he had Egypt attack him and all that and, and mistreat him, that was so that they will turn to God with open arms. Too bad it didn't last that long. Let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children. Signs are for the Jews. Let the Lord perform to the Jews the signs and wonders. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. You don't work to be saved. But you work because you are saved. And let us do things that will be proper to God and that people all around us will see, hey, look at a wonderful God we got. Now, would you think that today, if you were to read the Old Testament and run over to Jerusalem today and think, oh, hey, no, you got a bunch of Roman Catholics running around over there lying to you and mistreating you and telling the Jew that that's not their land. You couldn't get any truth out of there over there now today. And the Jews denied Jesus Christ. Out of Jerusalem. The city that was to be the light of all the Gentiles of all the world. That the Queen of Sheba came to, to hear the wisdom of Solomon that God gave him. I guess Jesus Christ is going to have to set up his throne of David upon the place. And reign himself to get the perfect Judgment, I guess, the perfect kingship, the perfect rule and order of the kingdom. With everyone that loved him and served him with a willing heart, serving him in all the cities. You think it would be respectful for the Lord Jesus Christ in the millennium to have a, a worldly, worthless, worthless Christian be doing serv servitude and, and uh, ruling cities? You think that would be a testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ? I doubt not. Moses, the man of God, prayed a prayer, and it's written here. To, you know what, Lord? You are so wonderful. We are so nothing. Yet we, we make you mad more than we make you happy. And but Lord, you've done great things in our life. And what little happiness that we do to you, let it be glory to you. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. 
I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How